It means to become a father. It means to progenerate. It means by extension, get this, by extension, to become a mother. Now, when I think of that, you see, that's man's order of explaining genial. I'll bet when it comes to procreation, if you were to give the woman a chance and said, it really means I carried the child, I had a lot of discomfort. But you, then it's the man that will say, oh, but you don't know the pain I went through. <laughs> what I mean is, Janelle, uh, it's beget. Uh, it means uh, um, to, to, the, um, uh, to bring forth and to propagate. But the, to explain it, the, to, it is the reason we're doing this. It means to become a father as well. But... I'm not taken away from the mothers. It means to become a mother also. I, I hope that it always will take two. And I hope that they share in it equally because um, that's as it is, okay? And um, regardless of what some people might want to change the fact, that's how it is. Father of all, though, you know, when it comes to begatting, there's only one begotten son. There was a lot of warning given us in the Word itself concerning that only begotten, and that also is to become a father. And our Father, our Heavenly Father, became a father. And all who believe upon that one also it cements the fact that you're His child too, and He loves you. But there are certain warnings. I want you to open your Bibles, if you will, to Psalms 2. Psalms 2. And basically, the verses we'll be covering today, he wants you to know he is your father. And Psalms 2 reads, verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? We have a world today that the heathen do rage. They rage all over the world, basically. And no rhyme nor reason except to kill innocent people that might disagree with their rights to take over the world when they have no claim whatsoever. Verse 2, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying. What is that anointed saying? Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Don't worry, God will. That's a promise. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision, confusion. Nobody can defeat our Father, and that's why it's wonderful that you are a Christian, that you love Him, that you follow Him. Then shall He speak unto them in His wrath, and vex them in His sore displeasure. And He'll ring their little bell along the way. Know who's ringing it when it happens, okay? Our Father is in charge. Our Father is in control. He expects us to take care of business, and what we can't take care of, He does. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Uh, his king is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And even though Christ is returned and is sitting at God's right hand on the great throne, but through the Holy Spirit, He's still in charge. It may not seem that way at times, but wake up and smell the coffee, my friends, or the roses. Our Father is about to come to a countdown, and you're living in it. 7. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. That is so very important. Became the Father. And the living Word became flesh. The Word came here. The Word preached. 
the word shared truth. I'm talking about Jesus Christ, of course. And it was God's way of saying, you're in the flesh. I don't feel I'm too good to live in the flesh also to show you how it's done right. And he did it right as an example for us. And not only did he do it right as an example for us, but in his crucifixion, he paid the price that on repentance your sins are forgiven totally when you're honest and when you're complete. Yeah, he's a real father. And, of course, begotten in the Hebrew is basically the same thing to progenerate. Verse 8, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Every knee is going to bow to Yeshua on the first day of the millennium. It is kind of sad in a way that certain people say, well, if you blow that bunch of people up, God's going to give you 60 virgins or more. Boy, and when they, you know, they don't know God's on the throne and he's angry. The first glimpse they get, they know they were misled. I can guarantee you that. The uttermost parts of the earth, verse 9, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. And that's why Christ is coming back this time, not on a donkey, but on a white stallion. And not to be crucified, but bearing a rod of iron to correct and to put things back right. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Have you ever seen an old clay pot raised and hit the deck? Shattering in millions of pieces. It's not going to be a pretty thing for some people, but it will be for us. Because God is going to take charge in a spiritual sense. And of course, what happens at that time? Don't ever lose yourself rightly dividing the word you know that you are instantly changed into your spiritual body, a body that doesn't get old, a body that doesn't ache or pain. And uh, what, what a wonderful time as he becomes king of kings and lord of lords. Uh, verse 10, Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, you judges of the earth. You do what's right, and you do it by God's word. That's one reason I'm so proud of this great nation. It's one reason I do not regret whatsoever shedding blood protecting that standard, this nation. Because our Constitution came from the Word of God. And basically the majority, uh, as far as um, I know it's trying to be taken from us to remove the Word God from all documents, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. We won't take it. We won't, we won't stand for it. And you know something? They know it. You can only push our people so far. And then things get set right. But this time, it's that king that's going to assist and lead the way. Follow the banner. Verse 11, serve the Lord with fear. That's reverence. And rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son. That means love him. Love the Son, lest he be angry and you perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. The only begotten, making our Father the Father of all. And as it is written in Ezekiel 18, verse 4, all souls belong to him. Why? He's the Father of them. I'm speaking of our Heavenly Father, Almighty God, Yahweh. They are his souls, and you know, you've heard me say many times, some people said, I'm going to get around to giving my soul to God someday. You, you're too late, friend. He's got it. He had it coming out the gate. It's just your choice as to what the judgment will be for you because it's judged on your life. Okay, let's, let's, um, let's turn, if we may, to the great book of John. St. John to start with, and we're going to finish in the epistles of John. St. John chapter 1. With the thought of parenting, begetting, and how it came to pass, and again, the subject 
Father of all. You know, we all have one thing in common. We all have the same Father, ultimately. And our Father is Almighty God. He's not happy right now. And if you think his wrath would really boil, it's just going to be a little angered he will be. Don't worry, that'll be enough to get the job done, okay? The uh, St. John, the great book of St. John, chapter 1, let's pick it up if we may with verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. And of course, this is John the Baptist, not St. John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. That's why he is our ticket, our way, our light to our Heavenly Father, the only begotten, the only uh, progeny in the flesh from Almighty God. Um, the same came... Oh, we got that. Okay. Through witness of light that men might believe through him, the eight... He was not that light, John the Baptist was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. In other words, he was in the spirit of Elijah. And the spirit of Elijah announces the coming of the Lord preceding it. There was, a, the, there was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. How many? Every man. That's why we all, everyone, has something in common. You have the same Father, the Father of fathers, our Heavenly Father. This does not take anything away from our earthly fathers, um, uh, fathers, fathers-in-laws, uh, daddy, uh, papa, sugar daddies, the whole bunch, okay? And it takes nothing away from that. Verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. They still don't. They still uh, turn at times. Don't worry. They will. It won't be any problem. Verse 11. He came into, unto his own, and his own received him not. That is to say, the majority of the world, and Israel in particular, both the house of Israel and the house of Judah, they, did, they crucified him, basically, or they didn't do it, but they had it done uh, at the work of the Kenites. They allowed it. Verse 12, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. you want a father? You say you don't have a father? Of course you have a father. Through him you become, there's no gender in sons of God. That's sons and daughters. Through him, that's the gate. That's your light. That's the truth. Uh, to them, he, and he gave power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. What name? Yeshua. Yahweh's Savior. When you believe upon him, that door is open to you. He hears you. He loves you. Our Father is love, and Father loves His children. That's why it is His will that uh, salvation come to this world and that all come to repentance, as it is written in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But they're not going to. But He's long-suffering, as it states in that same verse, meaning He's got lots of patience. And, and you know... Uh, think about it. Do you want to test God's patience? Well, look at the world today. And he's got to sit on the throne and watch. And he's wanting to do something about it. But every child must be begotten. Having the opportunity to come through this earth age to make his or her mind up. When does that happen? Well, nobody knows, but we're close. We're very close. All the signs, and that's what we're supposed to read, indicate so. Verse 13. Which were born, or you might say reborn, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. In other words, born from above. To come to the knowledge, not born again like most people teach, okay? It's much more than that. But to have the knowledge... 
distilled within your mind that you were born from above, meaning you were with God from before. That there was a rebellion there, that, that Satan fell and many fell with him. And God loves his children to the point that he wants them to change, to come to him. Why? He's their father, and he loves his children, even though they're naughty, naughty, naughty at times. And you can see it in the world today. He's sure got a lot of patience. And the Word was made flesh. That was for us. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I mean, his word was pure. His word was distilled and of a truth. His word kept us. His word led us. 15. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Why? He was from the beginning, forever and ever. One more verse. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. Love for love. You know? You give love, you get love. Loving your father is a winning thing, because you know why? He, he, he loved you, and that's... Why did he create you? Uh, you who, buddy? I'm talking about you. God created you for his pleasure, because God created all things for his pleasure. Last verse of, he, of Revelation chapter 4. You personally were created for his pleasure. And do you know what pleasures him? You know, if you don't, you're in trouble. It's real easy. All he wants you to do is love him. That's what he wants most from you, is for you to love him. Hosea 6.6, 6, I don't want your burnt offerings, I don't want your offerings, I want your love, which is your grace, your mercy. That's what he wants from you, and that's why he created you. So to be in his good standing, you want to be sure that you remember that. Now, the only begotten... And through that only begotten, that we all may be born from above, taken back into the fold, forgiven for any trespass, any sin that we may or may have not committed, but for the world to have peace and contentment. And oh, do we need it today when you look around yourself. You want to pray, beloved, and pray for that peace to come. Pray for his return. We're coming to that place, and prayer helps. But we have some very bad things taking place in this world today, and our Father is not happy with it at all. Our Father will take vengeance. Open up to the first epistle of John. That's the, that's the little epistles over before the great book of Revelation, Jude and Revelation. John, 1st John, we want to start about chapter 4, for another warning. Our God is full of love, but he gives warnings, and they're important. You know, um, family is important. God wants you to know who family is. God wants you to know who to listen to. Or you can get in trouble. You know, uh, yesterday I had a, um, a little fawn come charging across my lawn looking for its mama. It had got, went to sleep or something. And, it, and I mean, it was just running as fast as it could run for about 400 feet or five. And it went to the woods and it stopped and sniffed and back it came. To be lost is a terrible thing. And, of course, there's nothing you can do about it except watch and pray, you know, knowing all the time, Mama's going to find that baby anyway. 
Okay, that's the way mamas are. Okay, even on Father's Day, mamas are still like that. Okay, and she found that baby. Okay, and, uh, because this little sister or brother, I don't know which, was uh, kind of watching all this go in and got it all worked out. But that's the way it is. Family is important, and that's what God wrote about in this chapter, is for you to be able to discern whose family and what to be beware of. Chapter 4 of the first epistle of John, verse 1, and it reads, Behold, believe not every spirit. And there's some evil spirits in this world, my friend, and news, your newscasts document that. Very evil. But try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world, and those false prophets will spread their garbage. Those false prophets will work through politics or anything that they can to mislead, misguide, and to turn you away from family. To hereby know ye the Spirit of God... You got this? No, but this is how you tell. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Now, let me, is that hard to figure out? Any spirit or person that does not confess that Christ came in the flesh, you better be leery of. You better be careful of. Highly suspect. Verse 3, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come. You know it's, he's going to come. And even now already it is, is it in the world. In other words, the spirit of Antichrist is simply the spirit of Satan, for he is... Uh, anti is instead of in the Greek tongue, okay? So instead of Christ, he wants to play Jesus. And you know what? There's a lot of people going to think he is. See that you don't. That's what God's warning you about here. Be careful. Test the spirits. If they're not Christian, if they don't believe in Christ, you better be careful. It's not family. But there are people. Huh? You got that right. There are, they're God's children. But you better be careful. If you can't teach them, convert them, then um, you want to be careful how they come into your midst. Or you'll have evil spirits beginning to attack you, your family, your church, everything. You have to be on guard. That's why God is warning you here. He said, you said, well, they're nice people. They're not of God. Verse 4. Ye are, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is God that is in us than these heathen that go around murdering innocent people. Verse 5, They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. You don't. You're knowledgeable of what's going on. Pay attention. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. They either hear you and listen to you, or they don't. That's pretty clean cut, isn't it? Now, you've got all kinds of rag sheets and junk and everything being taught in this world today that is not scriptural. Let me tell you something. If it isn't scriptural, you better wring it out of your mind because it's garbage, pure, unadulterated garbage. Traditions of men or some man on an ego trip trying to make himself more than he is. Stick with the simplicity of God's Word. It's very simple. It either is or it isn't. Not by man's um, law of precedent. Well, on this hand, maybe you should listen to... 
you know, maybe they might say something sooner or later that would make common sense. Or according to dear Dr. So-and-so, maybe perhaps, even though it's not biblical, something will come to where one rope will come back around where the other one ties. Baloney. Stick to the word, period. Don't listen to garbage by false prophets, false teachers, for as it is written, there would be plenty of them. Well, how do I know? He just told you. This, the Word became flesh in the body of Jesus Christ. If it isn't Christ's teachings, you don't need it. You're looking for trouble, and I guarantee you, you will find trouble. Verse 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And every one that loveth is born, there's the word again, only in a different English word, born of God and knoweth God. Don't get lost. Stay with family. Our Father, love Him. Don't listen to man. Don't listen to the traditions of man. Stick with the love of your Father, your Heavenly Father, who strengthens your earthly father and mother and family and keeps peace in that family. Verse 8, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. God isn't hate blowing up little kids. God isn't one that beheads people for that are innocent. You know, that isn't that hard to determine, is it? You know, you, a lot of people say, well, I don't have discernment. Well, you know, you'd be kind of dumb if you couldn't discern between somebody that beheads people and somebody that tries to find peace and set people free. It shouldn't be that difficult. Well, but the politician said, to heck with the politician. If it differs from God's Word, you know where to call. Stay with God's Word. Verse 9, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten, there's our word again, Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Do you want to live, beloved? Do you want to live eternally, or do you want to die? It's your choice. It's that simple. Herein is love. Not that we, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation of, for our sins. We'd have a hard time making it by the law, beloved, because we, we all kind of fall short, mean well, but mess up. It happens in the best of families. And thank goodness that He did send the only begotten. Do you know why He did? Because He loves you. He wants you to obtain that salvation. That means to be saved. He doesn't want you to die. He wants you to love Him. Just as He said, that's what He wants out of you, is your love. And he pay, you know, many might say, well, is it free? Yeah, it is, but He paid an awesome price. I mean, He had no fun on that cross. Don't you ever kid yourself. He did it for you. Why? Love. He loves you. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. And family should be family. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. And it is. It flows. It's visible. You can feel it. You know it when you're with family. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. That Holy Spirit is powerful. It leads, it directs, it touches, it heals, it guides, it warms. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Cut and dried, my friend, not complicated, very simple. Again, because He loves you. He created you to love Him. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in Him, and He in God. 
And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Now, that's not difficult. That's very simple. It's straightforward. Our Father intends that we love one another because we all love him. Now, everyone, just and, and there are some that will get off the beaten path occasionally. And when they get off the beaten path, they just give up. You know, well, I just couldn't do it. So, and they get on a poor me baby jag. Get off of it. Get over it. Get a life. Okay? You're somebody. You're a child of God. He loves you. So you messed up. You think you're too good to mess up? Everybody does it occasionally, so don't get down. I mean... Get right back up and hit it again. Unfortunately, unfortunately, sometimes there's only one way we can learn, and that's by experience. And when you experience trouble, log it away. I mean, hey, you go down that road once and there's a big bad ditch down there that'll flip about anything that tries to go over it. You make that trip about two times and you should wake up and say, I don't want to go that way no more. You can get hurt down there. So the process of living, the process of dying, the process of gaining our Father, to be with Him is to love Him. He loves you. So learn from experiences. Why am I saying that? I don't want you to be discouraged with life. It's real easy to get discouraged when so much wickedness is in the world. Rise above it. Be above it. Look to the good, for the good spirit is there also. And overcome. Be an overcomer. Don't be a quitter. For we haven't even really started the fight yet. So what are you going to do when it really, you know, when the false Messiah does come if you can't handle now? You're in bad shape if that's the case. I'm seeing this to toughen you up, whereby you know you can always take another hill. Hey, what? so what? Well, I'm tired. Well, go. Get up. You know, get, a, get about a 13 boot right behind you, and it'll encourage you. Okay? We can do it. We can, we're can-do type people. So don't let the little troubles of this world today get you down. Or, you know... I don't know if I want to go to war with you if you're that easy to be had by Satan. Get tough. Get cracking. Be can do. That's a little old Marine military speech thrown in there, I suppose, with the love of God. That's okay. Tough love's good. Be encouraged. God will always strengthen you. That is his that is his promise. Skip right on to chapter five in this same book. Our Heavenly Father, Father of all, begotten and um, gender, that is to say, to become a father. And he becomes father of all. Whereas we are always to respect our mothers and our fathers, as the, first, as the commandment so stipulates. Chapter 5, verse 1 of uh, the first epistle of John. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And every one that be, that loveth him, that begat, loveth him, also that is begotten of him. A lot of begotten going on there, my friend, but it was for you. And a lot of love involved there. Do you know that narrows the field down considerably? Did you catch that? Uh, I'll, I'll ask a little question if you don't understand what I'm saying. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. How many don't believe that Jesus Christ is, uh, was born of God? Well, now let me see. There's a lot of people don't. Know your family. Verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. That's how you know family. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. They're easy to carry. That's why our Constitution was taken from these commandments. For 
whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Don't let this world get you down. You're an overcomer. Don't be so easily had to give in to the ways of the world. Hey, anybody can be brighter than what you've got in this world, okay? Media, politicians, many questions stated, acts, statements made, so stupid that anyone that is the least familiar with God's Word knows what tomorrow brings. Wake up. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? You overcome the world because you know what's going to happen in this world. Anyone that thinks they have the victory over us is kidding. They're puffing smoke, friend. They're kidding themselves. God will crush them. Their days are numbered. This is he that came by water and by and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood, and it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. God said in the beginning, let us make man in our, meaning himself, image. If you've seen the Son, you've seen the Father. So if you get to thinking, well, I just wonder why he put us in these flesh bodies. They hurt easy and they're perishable and they get sick. He came in one himself and they crucified it. He did not whimper. So don't you. Seven. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Verse 8, And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one, and that one is Christ. You with companion Bibles, there is something that needs to be corrected there for the sake of the audience. I'm not going to. But for the deeper student, if you wish, check the comment on your verse 7. And the words between in heaven and in earth were added by a copyist, okay? They weren't in the original text. But as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't change really anything if you're wise in, in the uh, word. Nine, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. Now, now let that settle in. Who do you listen to, men or the greater knowledge of Almighty God? For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son, his begotten, his only begotten. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath, not, hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Isaiah chapter 9, To us a child is born. In other words, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, all the way through, God said, I'm going to birth a child for you. He's going to be your king. And, and, and in the Minor Prophets, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. It was written all the way through the Old Testament that he would be born, where he would be born, even in Bethlehem. And he was. And if you understand the writings of Daniel, it even told you when, 400 plus years before the fact. So you could expect it, and it was. God doesn't miss a lick. Why? He loves you. He's your Father. And He gives you warning, always warning. That's what prophecy is, is a warning to those that see and hear. Um, let's go with verse 11. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. That's the way you find it. That's the life. That's the door. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. How many is it that really believes in Jesus Christ? I mean, think about it, beloved. Think about it. How many nations practice even other religions? 
Think about it. And then you might understand why the heathen rage. They don't have God. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. That's the offspring. I being the Father, he's saying, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. It makes the difference. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Now, don't read over that. Did it say if you ask anything according to your will, that he hears it? No, it said if you ask anything according to God's will. Because you may ask for something God doesn't want you to have. You got it? Okay, verse 15. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Do you understand what that said? When you pray and ask, you know that God received it. Now, whether he gives it to you, whether it's his will to give it to you, that's up to him. And you should love him enough to say, God knows what's best for me. God has something for me. You know why? You have a destiny, a purpose. God knows what it is that you're to have. So, um, you've all heard me say a little child might ask for a rattlesnake and to, to his earthly father or mama. Say, mama, I want a rattlesnake to play with. Well, most intelligent mamas will not give a little baby a rattlesnake. You know why? It'll bite him. Okay? So God knows what will bite you too. Okay, and that's said. Verse 16, If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. Now, I do not say that uh, he shall pray for it. That's the unpardonable sin. Sins committed within the Christian community which do not spring from the denial that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, sins in the flesh, are worthy of intercessory prayer. Did you hear what I said? Any sin committed in Christendom that um, is not a sin of denying that Jesus Christ came in the flesh is worthy of intercessory prayer by you. That's a good gauge for you to go by. There is one unpardonable sin, and that's if one of you refuses to allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you when you're delivered up before Antichrist. I do not believe that is forgivable, but I do not believe that will ever be committed, because I know you. And I know you're, you're ready to trot, okay? And I'm, I'm, I think that's enough said, okay? Verse 17, all unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. In other words, he'll forgive them. We know, now we're going to complete these next uh, four, five verses, and that's it. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. That, that means he's not going to be a habitual sinner. That means just go out and, and, and badmouth people and be a hell raiser in the community. It's not going to happen. I mean, it doesn't mean they may not eat too much sugar. Or, or want too much sugar or something like that, okay? But it, um, it doesn't mean they're going to be an habitual sinner. There is a difference. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. Do you know why? We have power over him. Christ gave us power over Satan. If he comes into your home, you run him out in the name of Jesus. He has no choice but to go. Any time in hot weather when little feelings get a little short and testy, you know, you want to be careful. That may be Satan trying to work his way in. Order him out. Don't pick on the one you love because Satan's disturbing you or because your flesh may be a little uncomfortable. Don't, don't, don't uh, take it out on the one you love, okay? Love is too great for that. Nineteen. And take it out on Satan. That's what I'm telling you. Kick him out. Get tough. All right? Get rid of him. Verse 19. And we know that we 
are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. Look around you, beloved. Watch television tonight. The whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God has come and have given us an understanding, hath given us an understanding, that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourself from idols. That means don't worship anything but our Father. Don't. You might say, well, well how could I worship something? Hey, a lot of people get a brand new car, and they start shining that rascal and setting it out front so the neighbors can see it, you know. So, whoo! Polishing it, and in a way, you can almost worship an object. You know what I mean? Like, like that. You know, put it not, I mean, don't be proud of your new car, but don't put it above God, okay? That's what he's saying. Well, Father's Day. Our Heavenly Father, Father of all. You know, do you know how you really know that He's love? Do you understand that even the wicked, He loves them? That's why he sent you, is hopefully we can save some of them through the sun, through that light. That your witness, even before the spurious Messiah, might draw some of them out of the fire. Because it isn't just you that he loves. He loves the world. And naturally, being a father and protective of his children, when it comes to culling time, he'll cull. And he'll call it close. Because when it comes to the eternity that we step into, he doesn't want any troublemakers there. And I guarantee you there won't be any. Because he knows what's in the mind of every person. That's why he can judge and we can't. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for being our Father. Father, bless your children, Father. Love them as we know you do, and they return that love and kind, Father. Let all these be a blessing that they come in contact with. In Jesus, Yeshua's precious name, amen.